Love is God and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it because God is the foundation of love. Praise the Lord family. My name is Jonathan Owara and I welcome you to our next segment of Embrace. Today, before we start, let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for the opportunity to share from your word. We ask that you speak to us and guide us, that we may be fully equipped for every good work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 to 13. Our scripture reading for today is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 to 13. I'm going to read from the NIV. It says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Our title this morning, or this time, whatever time you are watching, our title is Giving Permission. The title for our sharing today is Giving Permission. Paul, a tested, tried, educated, humble, focused, intelligent, but very Christ-centered preacher of the Word of God, writes to his son Timothy. And as he writes to Timothy, his spiritual son, who was also a pastor of the church, he writes to him. But also, he is writing to us at this particular point. These words are still relevant to us today. He writes to Timothy and he tells him, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Don't let anyone. That means we give people permission. We give people the opportunity to think less of us. Many times, because of the way we act, because of the way we speak, we've given people the opportunity to think less of us. And after that, we get angry. We get so bitter. Not for, uh, when we're forgetting that actually it's us who gave them permission. That's why our title for this day's sharing is Giving Permission. So Paul, Paul says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. What does this mean? It means giving no, give no room for anyone. Give no room for anyone. Don't accept. You know, we, today we have many desires. We have many pleasures. We have so many things. We have childishness. We have funny jokes. We have funny company. We have pleasures of life. These give people opportunity to look down on us. If you have a funny joke that is so irrelevant, if you're childish in one way or another, if you have funny company, you're giving people the opportunity to look down on you. You and I have the power to let people think less of us or think highly of us. It's not in the hands of God. It's in your hands. You have the power to make people think or call you whatever they want to think of you or call you. Depending on the things we're going to be talking about. So Paul says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. That's the first one. What does that mean? I have explained. Secondly, he says, be an example to all believers. He says, be a testimony to believers. Those of the household of Christ, those that have accepted Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. You are supposed to be an example first to the believers. You are supposed to be an example first to the children of the household of Christ. It's important that before you go out to be an example to people out there, you first an example to the household of Christ. You are an example to the believers, people who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You're also supposed to be an example in your family before you step out. 
Before you begin speaking about good to the neighbors, good to the schools, be good to who company outside, first be an example in your own family. That's what Paul is saying. So Paul says two things. Don't let anyone, don't give people a chance, don't give people an opportunity to look down on you just because you're young. And I've heard people say, don't look at, and I am young, you know, I am, I don't, I am old enough. You, it's, it's, it's not about what you, it's not, it's not about telling people to respect you. It is how much permission you give them. You don't tell them. You'll give them the permission to either look down on you or respect you. So Paul says, don't let anyone look down because you're young. The second is, be an example to believers. First, those who are in the household of Christ. How can we be examples? How can we be examples to the believers? There are five reasons that I'm going to give you. Five of them. How can we be examples to the believers? How can we help people stop looking down on us? One, what do you say? What do you say? Paul says be an example in speech. Matthew chapter 12 Verse 34 to 35 says this, You brood of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. You cannot... Speak good when your heart is full of negative. You cannot speak good when your heart is full of evil. So how can you be an example? How can you stop people from speaking bad about you, of speaking negative about you? Be an example in what you speak. Ensure that the word of God is full in your heart and full in your life. That is the first one. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says this. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Other versions say, from it flow the issues of life. It's important. Proverbs 10.1 says, The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. The mouth of a righteous person, a righteous person speaks Good words speaks out of their mouth is a fountain of life. Out of their mouth flow the issues of life. Out of when, when they speak, they speak good. You want to be around them. They don't gossip. They don't talk rubbish. When you begin gossiping, you begin speaking negative, you begin speaking funny words like the ones the young people speak today, you're giving people an opportunity to despise you. You're giving people an opportunity to look down on you. That is dangerous. So have you been speaking negative? Have you been speaking evil? Have you been speaking lousy words? You have given people an opportunity to call you what they want to call you. You think by speaking some jargons, you're a nigger, you're what, you think that will help you. It's actually making people look at you as a wrong, a wrong person. In Africa, in Uganda specifically, they call you emuyaye. Emuyaye is a lumpen just because of what you speak. So the first reason... The first way of how you can be an example and not let people look down on you is what you say. Be careful to speak what is right. The second thing is the way you live. Paul says in your conduct, the way you live. 1 John chapter 2 verse 9 says, If anyone claims I am living in the light but hates a fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. <laughs> If you say you are, you, are, you are a believer and you hate another believer, you are living in darkness. That is your conduct. How do you behave? How do you behave? Psalm 119 verse 7 says, As I learn your righteousness, I will thank you by living as I should. The psalmist is writing and saying, As I learn God's righteousness, as I learn to live in the ways of God, I will thank God by living as I should. How do you live? Where do you go? Where, who do you associate with? In your conduct, where you go gives people an opportunity to either despise you or respect you. How you dress. These are very important things. 
How do you, how, when you, how you dress gives one opportunity to despise you or respect you. It's important that as children of God, we are examples to believers first. So you who's watching, what you say was the first one. The second one is how you live. Titus chapter 2 verse 1 says this, As for you, Paul was writing to Titus again, one of his other children. He says, As for you, Titus, promote the kind of living that reflects the wholesome teaching. Promote the kind of lifestyle. Promote the kind of well-being that reflects, that's a reflection, that represents the whole teaching of Christ Jesus. The Bible says Jesus grew in knowledge, in wisdom, in stature, in relationship with men and with God. So if your relationship and your conduct among men is, is, is appalling, needs organizing, you need to check it. Because some of us have given out how people look at us by just the way we behave. Number three, Paul says you can be an example to the believers in love. When you love, you're being an example. When you love, you give us an opportunity to respect you and call you differently and look at you differently. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8 says this, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone, even a child of God, anyone, anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone that does not love does not know God, for God is love. The third way we can be examples to believers, the third way we can stop people from despising us is by loving. Do you love? Let's begin from the household where you come from. Do you love your father? Do you love your mother? Do you love your life? Does your behavior reflect how much you love yourself? Does your behavior reflect how much you love your parents? Does your speech reflect how much you love your parents? You're sleeping in a good house, but your parents are sleeping in a very ramshackled house. You have a very good phone, your parents don't have. And you say, oh, I love my parents. You have everything, but your parents are lacking. You make us despise you. There's no love in you at all. You don't have love at all. And that's dangerous. That's number three. Number four, Paul says you can be an example in, by your faith. You can be an example through your faith. Romans 10, 17 says, So faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ. So I've heard people talk about faith. What is faith? What is faith? Let me tell you. Let me explain a little bit to you. These ears are tuned to the brain. The brain is one of the most powerful organs that God has given us. And the brain is fed by the ears and the eyes, most especially. What you hear and what you see sticks to your brain forever. <laughs> what you hear, what you see sticks in your brain forever. So be careful what you listen to. And that's why the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10 verse 17, that's Faith comes by hearing. Do you want to build your faith? Listen and hear the word of God. Do you want to grow in trusting God? Do you want to grow in knowing God? Do you want to grow in your, your knowledge and your increase about God? Then listen to the word of God. Read the word of God. Watch good films. Watch things that build you. Avoid anything that will destroy you. So be an example in faith, because the more your ear listens to the word of God, the more your ear listens to the word of God, the more your heart is fed and out of your mouth, your mouth becomes a fountain of life. Number three, be an example in your faith. Mark 11, 22, is a story of Jesus cursing the fig tree. Then Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. How can they have faith in God? When we haven't showed them this God, how can people have faith in God when we haven't shown people this God? How can you know this God unless someone has shown you this God? Let's show non-believers God. Let's show non-believers God. 
let's behave, let's bring, f let's, let's build our faith strong enough to share the word of God. The one true God and Jesus only his son is the one that builds our faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Be an example in your faith. Talk about your faith. You're born again. You're Christian. You're a child of God. Profess it. Speak. Speak about it. And number five, Paul says, be an example in purity. Your purity. Purity of heart. Purity of head. Purity of hands. I'll explain that. The heart is where we, where, where the, where we all find life or death. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. When you hear someone speaking things like stupid, foolish, useless, you know their heart is full of stupidity and uselessness as well. It's just as simple as that. When you hear someone, a young man, speaking rubbish, speaking those words, you know that their heart is full of rubbish. But when you hear people bless others, you know their heart is full of blessing. I ask you, what is in your heart? Transformation starts in the heart. And transformation rolls out to the head. If the heart is not transformed, the head will only be having knowledge. So the first is purity of heart. Purity of heart stems from the foundation of the word of God. Then we come to purity of head. Mind, emotions, and your feelings. What do you watch? What feeds your brain? What do you listen to? What kind of music? We've talked about this over and over. It's for your good. Purity of head. Then purity of hands. God has given us the, the ability to work with our hands. Body, purity of, of body. Hands, the hands represent the body. We're talking about bathing, brushing, ironing, sitting well for our sisters. We have our sisters who put on very short skirts that when they sit, the, sh the skirt is only covering the subject matter. That's dangerous. You're not pure. There's no purity in you at all. Nobody wants to marry a prostitute. And a prostitute, simple, this, a simple definition for me, is someone who exposes private things, things which are supposed to be for, some, for privacy, you're exposing it. Those thighs are not for exposing. Those breasts are yours. Some of you expose breasts to the rest of you as if you want to breastfeed your neighbor. That's dangerous. It's important that we keep purity of body. Bathing is part of it. Brushing your teeth, some of your teeth smell. If someone says, praise the Lord, and you want to close your mouth, you want to close your nose, you don't want to praise the Lord, brother, and closing your nose. That is part of purity of body. You know? Purity. It's important. Purity. Ironing. Someone has a greased uniform. You're a student. You have a greased uniform. You're a teacher. You have a torn shirt looking like a matoke rider. Look, it's important that we are, we are pure even in body. Dressing decently. It's important that we dress decently. We normally like shouting only the women. No, 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 not only women. Even men dress decently. So men dress decently. And even men, when you're sitting, be careful how you sit. Some of us sit and we expose our thing, and then the, the, the private air just swollen like this. And people, who, and their children, the young girls who are watching. That's not being pure. Paul is saying purity. Purity. Psalm 119 verse 9 says this. How can a young person stay pure? And the answer is by obeying your word. Not reading just, but obeying. You don't just read, reading, study, Bible study. Bible. No, 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 you're supposed to obey. When the Bible says respect, respect. The Bible says no sex until marriage, it is clear. No sex until marriage. Obedience. Obedience of the word of God is enabled by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that helps us to obey the word of God. As we bring this to a close, Paul writes and says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. And he says, until I come, or until Jesus comes back, devote, 
put yourselves to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Reading of Scripture, obeying it, teaching other people and preaching the Word of God. Remember, it is you who gives people permission to call you what they want or to speak anything about you. If you're an example in what you, sp what you say, how you live, in love, in faith and in purity, you will have good words spoken about you, at least by many. Till next time, God bless you. For any comments, leave it down in the comment section. God bless you and bye-bye. Love is God and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it because God is the foundation of love.